Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be taking a $50 router and converting it to a $500 router by replacing its firmware with DDWRT. So let's get started. So guys, if you don't know what DDWRT is, it's an aftermarket firmware that you load and replace the factory firmware on routers itself, unlocking a lot of options that you would normally see on like a Sonic Wall or a Cisco itself. Now, each router has its own way of loading the firmware into the system. Um, there might be a 30-30-30, um, or it might tell you to hold and reset, or some of them just you could do right from the browser itself. You're gonna have to look up each one by searching via Google or via DDWRT website, which I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, I ended up buying a TrendNet um, 824. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description on the one that I got. And this, from factory, supports DDWRT. Now, that's a good sign because now I know that once I load in DDWRT firmware, every hardware would operate correctly as it should. Uh, sometimes if it doesn't fully support DDWRT or DDWRT doesn't fully support the router itself, you might have some missing options or some stuff might not work like Wi-Fi might not work or um, 5G, 5 gigahertz on the Wi-Fi doesn't work. I don't know. It's different things. So you got to have to read the forums and see what works and what doesn't. But if the website itself say it supports DDWRT, then you're pretty much good to go and that means that all the options are working and all the options or all the hardware stuff does work on this release. So guys, before we start, I have to put up a disclaimer that this will brick your device if you do it wrong. So read all the instructions, make sure everything is correct before proceeding because you could turn your $50 router into a $50 paperweight. All right, with that being said, once we navigate over to ddwrt.com, which I'll leave a link in the description, you're gonna to go to your router database and first type in the first three letters or first three characters of your router name. So in my case it's D T E W dash eight two four. And you're gonna see that it is supported, activation is not required, revision and all that stuff. Once you click on that link, you'll be brought to the files that you need to download to upgrade your firmware. Now again, fortunately, on TrendNet side, this does support the open source firmware and it actually gives you the download directly from their site and obviously data sheets and uh, help files and stuff like that. So I was able to easily update my or replace the firmware to DDWRT with my router. Again, I'm going to leave a link in the description below on what router I bought so if you guys are interested you'll see what I purchased. Now here it has a firmware TEW824DRU and it's the same thing over here. Now if you're on DDWRT's website and this is a website I use a lot especially if I'm gonna buy a new router and I want to make sure it supports DDWRT I'll go here first through my phone type in the model number and it'll tell me if it supports it or not. Now here you're gonna see that there's two files. Uh, you want the factory to DDWRT if you're doing this for the first time. Other than that, it's web flash image, meaning if you're already upgraded to DDWRT, you could just update it using this web flash image. So in our case, we're going to want the DDWRT um, factory to DDWRT.bin. And again, I could get it from this website, which is compressed. That's why it's 12 megabytes versus the 15 over here. Uh, after that, you just have to follow the instructions on how to power cycle to load in this uh, new firmware. For me, all I had to do was hold the reset button and then power cycle. That means to press the power button, turn it off, press the power again while holding the reset button. And then it tells me to navigate to 192.168.10.1. Again, every device is different. Every model has a different way of doing it. Next, I'm in the router recovery menu. And for me, I just have to choose the file, um, find the factory to ddwrt.bin, upload it, navigate to 192.168.1.1 and finish the instructions, which is, you know, router username or router password. And in my case, I would like to use something I remember, so I ended up using uh, admin and a password that I remember because we don't go to the router enough for us to change the username to something that we'll remember. So I just tend to leave it at admin. So after you log in for the first time, after you made your username and passwords and everything, you're going to be presented with this screen. Now this screen will load by default without you having to type in your password. You could disable it, but this will screen this screen will always load. Now I already typed in my password and everything, so it won't ask me again. But I'm going to give you an idea of what 
this setup has going on. So in the setup itself, I usually use DHCP. My router is named DWRT, you can always change this. I always end up changing the third octet of the router's IP if I'm on a customer's house or something like that and I tend to use their house number. That way I don't have conflicting IPs if I am trying to manage their network. Uh, a couple of other stuff like advanced routing, networking, or tunneling you could do. Uh, here's the wireless setup. It's the same as any other router. You could just go in, change the wireless network name, wireless security you could change, and stuff like that. Uh, the good stuff is actually in the services here. You could actually add services, change stuff, tunneling, SNMP. Um, you're going to have to go to the website to find out more details about each item, but it allows you to do so much more stuff. Like VPN, you could you know, enable VPN and connect to a client, or you could turn this into a VPN server. Um, you have the NAS, where if you stick in a USB, you could turn it into a file share. Ad blocking, you could add ad blocking into um, DDWRT comes native, natively with it once you enable it. As far as security, um, here's the fun stuff. Um, you could say you could limit access to SSH. Uh, filter proxies, you know, you, you have more control of basically your network with DDWRT. Access, res access restriction. Now, if you have children, you don't want them to see certain websites, you can block them. Uh, certain times of the day, you want to block internet access. That's fine. You could do that too. Certain protocols you want to catch. That's also possible. If you don't like anybody, you know, BitTorrenting, you could just add it in here and they can't BitTorrent. Uh, NAT, so you could forward your IP addresses, uh, the port numbers and stuff like that. Um, administration is other stuff that you could play around with as far as, um, you know, that screen that I was telling you about, do you want it to pop it up, you know, um, remote management, SSH management, stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff you're going to have to go through it. But all in all, it's a really great firmware. It has a lot more options than the factory firmware. And you, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy using this. And it's much more stable and allows more traffic to be worked up than the original firmware. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Now I have some final thoughts about this. If you are thinking that, hey, why don't I just take a cheap router, load up DDWRT, unlock all these options and use it in an office environment. The difference is hardware. Now you're going to have some sonic wall where you're going to have quad core, dual core, more RAM and everything. You're going to have Cisco with more better hardware, more ports and everything. Um, the reason why DDWRT works in a home environment is because we don't have that many devices. Now you're going to have at most 10, maybe 15 devices connected at all times or at some times. And it has enough horsepower for these home routers to process all that and run the firmware without any lag. The problem is if you have a bigger environment, 25 computers or more, 50 computers or more, you're going to run into the problem where the CPU is not holding up against all these computers or it's not enough memory and you're going to get problems uh, with packet dropping and collisions and stuff like that. So for home environment, I highly recommend using DDWRT, especially if you are a family man and you want to lock down some of the internet, you want to block uh, some sites or you want to block certain limit access to uh, certain devices or put a time frame where, hey, on weekends, you're not allowed to use the internet. You could do all this in DDWRT. Anyway, if you guys got any questions about this, please hit me up in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button. That helps me a lot. Also gives you notification on when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.